welcome to episode 138 of Both Down, the number one Blood Bowl podcast. In the Lustrian stronghold of the Kara Temple. I am Steve. I'm... Oh. Hey, I'm leading this, dang it. Okay, so, you go for it. I will. I am Steve, a.k.a. Kilowagi. With me, as always, is Scott Prime. Howdy, everybody. There we go. Know your place. Ooh. <laughs> um, uh, how are you doing, Scott? I am good. I am tired. Yeah. But not as tired as I was days ago. This has been a hard week to recover, so... Yeah, we uh, went to Chaos Cup. We will have that episode next. This is just going to be a one-off for the Amazons, since we got him as a preview. Things got to us kind of late, but that's okay. And uh, we're just going to be covering that. We don't want to spoil anything for the Chaos Cup, so I don't think we're going to like no, get into anything. Tired. We're just going to jump straight into the Amazon content. So this episode might be our shortest one ever, but knowing us... Doubt it. Nah, we'll make it like last way too long and somehow get on a tangent. So. Oh, always. Always tangents. <laughs> All Speaking right. of. Oh, wait. No. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we'll be right back. In a time that people thought would come much sooner, uh, it is Amazon season. So Amazons are here. And we did get a nice fancy preview look at them. And this is our chance to tell you about it. Yeah, do we know any reason why maybe that some of this was delayed? Is it was it maybe printing something or so? I mean, in theory. Based we have, we have... yes, based on comments that I have seen online, which I have no ability to verify, and GW has not said anything about it. The reason this whole production got delayed is the Spike magazine was being delayed. I guess the company mm. who was supposed to make them ran into issues, didn't get it done. And to be fair, that's kind of how it came to us, too. We got, um, overall, we got the team, the box of cards, two star players, right. and then the spike came last. Typically, the spike comes in with everything else. So. There is some credence to that speculation, but I have no way of backing it up. Yeah, the spike was almost two weeks late. And it's not like GW is ever going to tell us. So right. it just is what it is. Well, that's, that's perfectly fine. I was just yeah. kind of just curious. I mean, sometimes production stuff happens. No, so. everybody was curious. Like, they put this out a long time ago, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I remember because I saw the post for, you know, Chaos Cup where... They were talking about if the rules come out by this time, and it should come out in time, and yeah, it never did. So fully expect them to be, they should be good for U.S. Open, right? I don't see why they wouldn't. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty orders, sure orders go in on you know as you're listening to this, you know Saturday, and then you can you can order it and have it in time. I, I guess the big challenge is is getting it in. And having it built and painted in time for the US Unless system. you have the old GW ones like I do. Unless you have the old ones, right. Which, not a super popular team from what I remember. Um, I always, they're kind of uh, ugly, but they're kind of cool. I always love the look. Now, mine are kind of ugly because I painted them. But I always like the feathers and stuff. Yeah. Do you want to talk about, since we're talking about the old look, you want to talk about the new look? Yeah. Go ahead. Let's talk. Us about I me mean, to be fair i got the north stuff this is all scott's then whatever comes next we have to fight over uh so you yeah. have currently in your yeah, possession I, the have, team. I have a feeling steve's passing the buck on these to me because uh something cool is coming out and he knows about it and won't i tell me. i will take these i like amazons <laughs> and when we get into the roster i really like amazons so let's talk about the models yeah uh, they went for i don't know if this is the proper term, like kind of Aztecian in some ways. Sure. If you're asking a old white guy. <laughs> yeah. Anyone um, in Mexico or Latin America who gets offended by us saying Aztecian or whatever, we're stupid. We don't know. So give us a little credit. Yeah. I mean, there's still some feathers and there's long hair. The snakes. The little, there's snakes on these things. I mean, I, Overall, I like the models 
Except the models that are on one foot, which there's quite a few of them. Yeah. There, there's at least six of them in this box set. Um, I like how they look, but there's two models, and I'm trying to look here on the sprue. Yeah, here, here we are. I'm, I'm looking at them right now. I found both of them. There is a line woman figure that if you take the ball of your foot, <laughs> you know, like if you were on your tippy toes type deal, that is what she's on. Yeah. And there's, um, it's, and then there's throwers that are the same way. And they're even maybe, I'm looking at the leg right here, and it might be even a less surface area to attach that to a base than the line woman. Blitzer's that way too. Well, I'm trying to look for that, that model here. The Blitzer, it must be multiple pieces because yeah, yeah. this brew, there's six figures on it, but I'm having a hard time. Yeah, oh, I yeah, you're, you're right. I just found the, the Blitzer model, and it is just... Look, it's the, at this yeah. point, why do we even complain? I mean, it's not going to change. I know that. And, you know, the skeptic in me says, GW wants you to buy these, so they break off, and you have to buy new ones. Mm -hmm. And everybody tells me how crazy I am. But I'm telling you, I've seen it in the league. I've seen it with all these new models. I see it with these zombies on one feet. They break off really easy. I've seen it with the lizard men. You know, a dice doesn't even hit them. Somebody just grazes them or they, they fall from the hand to the, to the, not the floor, just to the pitch. Yeah. And they break. So don't tell me these are sturdy and stuff like that. Cause I don't, I don't buy it. Um, I like how the Jaguar warrior looks like even though this is like the blocker figure that we'll go into talking about later. I actually like how the, the Piranha Warrior looks, which is the Blitzer figure. Yeah. But I just don't like that they couldn't put two points of, you know, Connection. contact to the to the base. Because even if I wanted to buy two boxes of these and sub out those line women that are on their tippy toes, I still had to deal with it with the Piranha Warrior, and I had to deal with it with the thrower, the yeah. Python Warrior. You're not and, wrong. And kind of like I get the Python Warrior is the thrower, and the, but they have a silly little snake, all, you know, wrapped around her while she's playing. Silly yeah, little whatever. snake, huh? Silly little snake. Oh, silly little snake. I like the turn reroll markers a lot, actually. Uh, they have the serpent, the snake type deal. Yeah. Um, the the extra balls are like crystal skulls and stuff, which goes in with the Lustria theme and all that stuff. Those are really and, cool. And they have a, another ball where it looks like a snake is... Oh, actually, both eaten. of them are snakes, have eaten the ball. So mm -hmm. they're... Or they've ate a creature, an egg or something, and they're using it as a ball. I like that. I like the, the coins. I think all that looks nice. I think the colors they chose for like this is what the team should look like all look nice too this is a There's team a that i can't wait to see people's take on like the norse team as much as i love it not going to be a whole lot of variation on that team it's going to be basically the same for when everyone paints it this team though the choices of colors the choices of how to paint the snakes and the hair and the helmets there's a lot of different ways this can go and I don't think that this is like the one featured is going to be ultimately my favorite. Hmm. Get some I mean, hair, be... get some hair color changes based on position and stuff. It'll help it be easy to recognize. Yeah, I, and I I hate the thrower model so much in this, like because of the snake. Is... No, it's not even the snake. It's just like here I am on my tippy toes. Oh, yeah. and I mean I know GW. <laughs> American football, like we were talking about this yesterday, watching a football game, and they were even Jennifer brought this up uh, during the OU game. The quarterback who was trying to run in action and on one foot would try to throw the ball long, and the ball they say like you have to set your feet to throw a pass. Yeah, and he was very inaccurate. And then when he set both his feet, meaning two points of contact on the base. <laughs> Then he threw well. But these match their skills. They have on oh, the ball get, now. Get the hell out of here. Okay. 
So I'm I'm always going to be a guy who complains that my model could get knocked over. The little werewolf guys are on one little foot. Some of the zombies, some of the yeah. skinks. This would pro. I don't have an official GW Amazon team. I have like some Valkyries that I use for them. This was at first when I heard about it, I thought I would be auto buying this. And this is not an auto buy, even though, you know, you've given me this team. I don't, I doubt I even paint this up. I mean, I, I didn't give it to you. The GW did. So, right. Well, I'm saying like, yeah, yeah. I know you took, you took the door stuff. You were going to maybe give this to me. So this just doesn't appeal to me. I mean, like, I like how it looks. I get that. I don't want to deal with those models and I don't want to buy another box to buy some extra alignment because I definitely wouldn't deal with the Eagle warrior. Who's like, I don't even know what she's doing. Like trying to jump back. Like she's scared <laughs> or jumping forward. I don't, I don't get it. Um, I love, I love, I love, I yeah. love the other two linemen poses like a ton. And I love the Jaguar warrior pose a lot. I think she's juking the, to the side. Okay. Maybe. Well, this is a little disappointing in my in my honest opinion because, like I said, I'm not. I didn't order any through That's the fine. store. So, let's talk about the cards. Okay. Does anybody care about the cards? Sure. Let's act like they care. Okay. So inside, you, you get your the basic box of cards. cards. Somebody buys these. Yeah, I don't know who. I'm sure people buy them, but. Stupid, you get your cards. four reference cards, you get your wasted 19 blank cards. Did you count them? No, it says right here on oh, wow. how to use oh. these cards. Okay, fair enough. Um, then you get four star player cards. So we get Galatal Stop, we get Card Levon Kill, we get Boa Constrictor, and Estelle Le Veno. Is that how you pronounce her name? Sure, Venu. The new, the new, whatever the old uh, witchcraft lady. Then we also get sixteen star player cards, or I'm sorry, special play cards. You get eight random feats. You get eight random events to use if your league uses the cards. So I'm not going to get into like what each one of these says because honestly, I know very, very, very few people who use the cards. So. Meaning we know none. <laughs> Look, I, no, I like I like the cards in general, just not the blank ones. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, um, the blank ones are really still. I'm sorry if somebody uses them, fine, but these are really a big waste. Yeah, we did not get a copy of the pitch or dice. They do look awesome, though. They've I been... did order, and to show you, I thought they looked nice. Um, I ordered both of those through the store. Oh, so. nice. Yeah. the There are complaints that they're not easy to read. That's half the What's stuff. The field? The field and the dice both. But that's just half the stuff anymore. Well, I've learned to sometimes these dice that I think are going to be amazing show up and they're not as good as I expected or vice versa. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wait to see them in person and kind of you know, some fields I thought looked like utter trash, and then I get them in my face, and I'm like, eh, I kind of like it. So <laughs> I'm going to wait to see those in person and not on a little screenshot. So Fair enough. So I guess that brings us to the spike, and then we'll discuss the stars, I guess, at the end. I mean, not, what, not much to talk about. You have them. So <laughs> at this point, everybody, we got the other stuff in early. Steve brought it over. We discussed it, looked at it, saw it both together. Um, the spike came in later, so Steve is the only one that's read that in this review. So mm -hmm. Steve, gonna, Steve's gonna go comb over it, and I'm just gonna have to play along and ask like silly newbie <laughs> questions because I don't really know what's going on yet. And also, as always, we try to be respectful of GW's trust with us to have this early. We don't really want to be giving you all the information, we want to tease you enough just so you go out and buy it. I know that. I think one of the YouTube channels or something did like the full reveal and showed every page or something. I'm just like, that doesn't, that doesn't feel right. Yeah. But we're also, I'm sorry. There's some of you blood bowlers out there that are, 
something new comes out and you're like, anybody have a PDF? Cause they're, yeah. and I don't know your life situation. Maybe you are, don't have the money for it and you love your hobby. But I'm also one of the guys that if I like my hobby, whether it's like a, a board game, a card collecting game or something, you know, I'll go put money into it if I care about it. So I'm always sure. going to buy the spikes either way. So we're just different in that. And I kind of like, I don't really, when we have these and we can them off, Steve, I'd like you or me to read them first and not talk about it. So the other guy doesn't spoil anything. Mm -hmm. And then we go, did you notice this? Did you notice that? So, yeah. Um, so first off again, we have the painted figures which we'll get into that again when we discuss the roster, I think. And then okay. we got a welcoming page, which has a nice picture of an old coach with feathers in her head, just like the old uh, figures, which I thought was neat. Oh, that's cool. Then we talk about the team and the positions, and we get into the stats. Now, if they haven't, if you haven't seen the stats, we'll go ahead and go through them. There are some changes, and the roster went from one of the most simplest rosters pretty much to what yes. I feel is a very good allegory to the Norse roster. You kind of feel that way? Like it's a good sister team to the Norse now? You mean now that they've changed them up a little bit? Yeah, of course. Yes. It yes. really feels I, I, like Norse 2.0. Yeah, I mean before all the Norse people were you know, three, you know, what is it, six, three, three, seven block. Yeah. Pretty much down the line. Except and the Amazons the before were six, ones. three, uh, seven dodge. Mm -hmm. And so now I think this kind of, kind of balances them out that they're like the sister team to the Norse or okay. however you want to look at it. So. Yeah. Well, let's just go ahead and go through this. And we're going to go with the zero to 16 Eagle Warrior line woman, 50 K six, three, three plus four plus eight plus dodge. Primary is general, secondary is agility and strength, so no okay. passing access. So not much different than the original one. Okay. Then we have zero to two Python warrior throwers. So okay. I guess those are not boa constrictors on their arm. They're now pythons. See the change they did? Is that what they were before, boa constrictor warriors? Yeah, when they first... When they first came out with it they talked about the boa constrictors being on the arm and then they came out with boa constrictor mm. and we were like wait someone screwed up somewhere so yeah now they have pythons okay um they are eighty thousand. big jump in price six three three plus three plus eight plus dodge on the ball pass Safe pass. Primary is general and passing. Secondary is agility and strength. And then we'll discuss this after I finish. Uh, okay. Zero to two piranha warrior blockers. 90k. No, 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 no. Piranha, piranha warrior, warrior blitzers. blitzers. Sorry. You're right. 90k. 7, 3, 3 plus, 5 plus, 8 plus. Dodge, hit and run. And jump up with a primary of agility in general, secondary strength. And we'll get to hit and run in just a second. Last positional, 0 to 2 Jaguar Warrior Blockers. 110k, 6, 4, 3 plus, 5 plus, 9 plus with defensive and dodge. And then primary is general and strength, secondary is agility. And rerolls are sixty k. Nothing different. They there's there are special rules or Lustrian Super League, so that's the stars they can take. So if you're out there, and you're thinking, I glanced at the models, I guess the Piranha Warrior before, Blitzers. Before we get to that, let me just do hit and run. Okay. So hit and run, after a player with this trait performs a block action. They may immediately move one free square, ignoring tackle zones, so long as they are still standing. They must ensure that after this free move, they are not marked by or mark marking any opposition players. It's kind of wordy, kind of weird. Let me do it again. 
After a player with this trait performs a block action, they may immediately move one free square ignoring tackle zones so long as they are still standing. They must ensure that after this free move, they are not marked by or, or marking any opposition players. So basically, yeah. you can hit someone and move to an open position. Correct. Very interesting. And it is on a block action. Not when doing a block. Specifically, a block action. Hmm. So I, unless Blitz says you do a block's action, I don't think you can do it on a Blitz. So let's talk about yes. some, some of these positionals. You want to talk about the figures now? Is that what you're getting at? Yeah. So up until this point, we've had a lot of like Wolverine type claws on the gloves of Blood Bowl players in this edition. The the human linemen have them. Uh, the human blitzers have longer like spiky claws. So you probably think, oh, that Amazon figure that was crouching down with the big long Wolverine claws has to be the Piranha Warrior Blitzer with seven movement. You know, mm -hmm. hit and run. No, that's the blocker piece. And the, the blocker, the blitzer pieces are the ones that I don't are know. on one foot. They're on one foot. They appear to be standing, and they. I don't know if they're physically bigger. You could probably say maybe if you look at the figures themselves. So looking at the sprue without them, uh, you know, built, I really think they're probably about the same size. Okay. I at first really thought they were slightly bigger. Therefore, they had to be the blockers because they have four strength. But I don't think that now. But I haven't also seen these built. Right. Um, so, yeah, the positions seem a little odd. It does seem very odd. And here's what <laughs> I still think the figure with the mask on it and the long claws that is a Jaguar warrior blocker really should be the blitzer. Nobody in GW is going to tell us if they made a mistake and just, they don't care. Right. <laughs> um, it just feels off to me or like they didn't think about it. I, I just don't, I don't understand. And I don't disagree even, with you. E even with the names, if you said, well, it's a Jaguar warrior blocker, therefore it has the claws. Yeah. But it doesn't have claws because that's the figure that doesn't have any claws because the... Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, they no. do. They're, they're the ones with the long claws. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm getting them mixed but up. But it, yeah. it, it they doesn't mean that they weren't supposed to be Jaguar blitzers and yeah. piranha blockers but i just it just feels off and originally when i was going to buy this team and i found that out i was definitely going to make the people with like the masks and the long claws be my blitzers and mm -hmm. the other one be a blocker but i don't even know if i care anymore <laughs> no <laughs> I don't. we might just be looking too much into it and be too worried about it and the skills they've given these people i'm not upset no I think this team, in a, given in a league format where eventually you're, nobody comes with block, so they don't automatically start with blodgers. That's I a big difference. Time, huh? So that's a big difference because before this team had four blodgers immediately. Was there was there reroll 60K before or was it 50? They should have been 50. Okay. Um, so in a league, this setting is going to take a little bit longer for them to build up to get blodgers. I personally, on these Jaguar Warrior blockers that come with defensive and dodge, I wish I would have just gave them Frenzy because oh, man, Frenzy that would be have amazing. been that would have been really good to go to trace that to the to the Norse team if mm -hmm. this is going to be if they're going to be cousin teams. Besides, that figure looks like the most violent figure on the pitch, anyways, based off their models. Yeah. Um. I just think that would have been way more interesting. Plus, I mean, they did give him defensive, which is a skill no one's going to ever take, pretty much. But so it might be useful. It might be useful, I'm sure, at some point. Uh, um, they do have four strength. I, I do think the four strength 
on the Amazon team really gives them some oomph, well, <laughs> if you know what I mean. And the because Blitzers have the seven movement, so it's really nice to see the change. Yeah, I, I don't know how they're going to perform. I think I think they'll still be fine. I don't think there's... I, I guess I don't know enough yet, but I think the four strength is going to be super helpful. Mm-hmm. I know when I played with Amazons in the past at tournaments and stuff, if I couldn't do somebody uh you know what was that willow rosebark who was fairly cheap for a star yeah. player that had four strength i just liked having one person that i automatically could get two dice on you know if i was going to blitz a, a regular player so one thing they about, have that now. one thing about this too is these four strength people have three agility still or three plus yes so that's a big difference and they have dodge exactly so, so I mean, you could very easily put these well, as your ball carrier and just be running down the field with a four strength. Well, that's blocker. what I was going to say is like, if I had this team and it's as soon as I got block on one of them, one of them would be my ball carrier. Yeah. And then you're going to have a blodger, four strength blodger right from the get go. That's. Does anybody else have that? No. No. I mean, you're, you're never going to get a, the four. You're never going to give an or four under the ball because of Frenzy and the two agility. People love the Bull Centaurs for ball carriers with the four strength, but again, two agility. I guess. Yeah. What, two plus I, now. Uh, four plus, whatever now. Yeah, you, I get what you're saying. You're old. Yeah, old school. So no, I don't know these are... if they thought about this team long-term is what I'm getting at. I think in league play, this team could be really devastating tournament play where you can add whatever skills you want they yeah, take but general here's the deal. most tournaments are let's say you're taking amazons to the u.s open mm-hmm. up in kansas city the max you can have is three of the same skill so you might have a a blodger <laughs> that you decide to run the ball with with four strength but you only have two block elsewhere so so I'm going to not take any throwers. I'm going to take block on both four strength warriors and put <laughs> well, block on one blitzer and wrestle on the other. I agree. I'm not saying you can't do good. And with there them. we go. I'm just saying you're limited a little right. bit. Right. And now the oh, throwers yeah. are the only <laughs> ones that can take pass. So if you want leader, that's the only way to go. But yes, I would take a if I was going to Kansas City, I would take uh, one of these uh, Jaguar Warrior blockers with uh, sure hands, yeah, and block. I mean, they're they're just as good at picking up the ball as the thrower is. So why yeah. have a thrower at this point? Uh, the only way you'd want the thrower is to get that cheaper leader reroll. Right, that's it. I mean, it's so. nice that they have on the ball pass and safe pass. Those are good skills. They're really good skills for a thrower. But not when I got a four strength, three plus agility, dude, or gal. No, I agree. With it's, nine plus armor. It's just weird. So I'm really liking this team is what I'm saying. Are you I, saying you're taking Amazons to uh, Kansas City? <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm going. If I go, I will probably be helping out. I don't know. I got you. We shall see. Right. Um, any Anything else about the positions you want to talk about? Or do you want to get into the stars? No, I want you to keep talking about the magazine. So okay. I know we kind of really went off on a tangent, but we had to no, talk about No, that's not a tangent. It, so. That's literally what we're here to talk about. So star players, Acorn the Squirrel. <laughs> of course, because he's the dumb guy that goes on everybody's team. Boa Constrictor, Estelle Lavenu, Glottal Stop, Grack and Crumbleberry, Grimbendal, the White Dwarf, Helmet Wolf, Carla Von Kill, Mighty Zug, Morgan Thorg, and Zolkath the Zoat. So 11 so, star players. Yeah, isn't it funny how some teams don't have hardly anybody? I am. I know GW this round of Blood Bowl has. Before it was Morg would play with anybody except for Undead. He was the one guy that play anywhere. Mm-hmm. And now they've decided to do that with Helmet Wolf, Grack and Crumbleberry. Um, 
I mean, it feels like the white dwarf is that way. But you either I get the get, white dwarf or the black gobbo, one of the two. Right. You you get one of the two. Depends on if you're evil or good. And uh, an acorn. He's everywhere. And I don't know. I still miss the the good old days of the other stars. So I'm just an old guy. So. Yeah. Um, it is interesting to say the rules for Boa Constrictor, Estelle Lavanu, and Glottalstop can be found later in this issue. The rules for other star players listed can be found in other Blood Bowl publications. Okay. Couldn't just like throw one page in here and give us stats? No, they don't want to do that. I know. So then it goes on to talk about famous Amazon teams, Feathered Jaguars, Skywatch Sentinels, Patraxi Pythons, and Great River Wardens. Hmm. Then we have the team spotlight on the Kara Temple Harpies. Okay, what's their name based off of, Steve? The Temple to Kara. Oh, okay. I mean, it's all it says. Okay. There's no Carla. I mean, there's no uh, Zara or anything reference. Ah, uh, no Lucky Luke reference? Not that I saw. Okay. Um, and Then we go to Team Profile... The head coach is High Priestess, Hippelta, Sharp Beak. Um, we've got our Hall of Fame team, which is always cool. Who's that? The same, the Harpies? Yeah, Kara Temple Harpies. Okay. The 2499 to 2500 squad. Huh. Um, we got star, uh, star Player Spotlight Estelle Lava New, Baroness of the Bayou. And she is still one of the least attractive star players we've seen. Wow. You wouldn't, like, bone her? Not with all those frogs around. So She, her, she, she would her need her a bath. Oh, I mean, oh, that's right. You don't like frogs. I do not. No. So her, her stats, since I got the card here, I can mm-hmm. agree. Uh, six movement, three strength, three plus edge, four plus pass, eight plus armor. So she's just like... A line woman? Like yeah, 100%. Basically. Okay. But she comes with disturbing presence, guard, dodge, sidestep, and low under four plus. Four. 190. That seems like a lot to put in for somebody that you could almost get for. Now, her special rule, don't forget that. All right. Let me read this here. She, here's another thing. She only plays for Lustre and Super League, yeah. which I guess is also the the lizard. So never mind. I answered my own question. I thought she was only And maybe C Ls. Yeah. Steve knows the C Ls are coming, and that's why he's giving me all these. <laughs> it's so stupid. I want them so bad just because everyone hates them. <laughs> why would they hate C Ls? Because people have made fun of them since they were first mentioned. I got you. All right, special rules. Estelle has baneful hex. Baleful. One, oh, it's oh, it is baleful. Yeah. Once per game, at the beginning of Estelle's activation, choose an opposing player within five squares, and roll a d6. On a two plus, the chosen player loses their tackle zone, and cannot be activated until the end of the opposition's next team turn. Interesting. I mean, so you're telling that me that is me pretty some... freaking powerful. So you telling me she is, um, let's say Griff is four squares away from the end zone, mm-hmm. and Estelle here is, if I do the math right, about thirteen squares away from Griff. So she dodges out of a tackle. Zone. No, 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 no. At the beginning of her activation. Ah, uh, so she has to be close. Okay. Yeah. Beginning of her activation. Okay. Well, still, she's still close enough. She could look at Griff, roll a two plus, and he can't do nothing for a whole turn. Yeah. His whole next turn can't do a damn thing. That's pretty crazy. I mean, that's. Now, the counter to it is they do have to be within five of her at her activation, which is easy enough to make sure that doesn't happen. But, I mean... It will, it will keep you, like, after her, though. Yeah. It's going to make you make sure that you know where she is. Now, that being said, her other skills of Disturbing Presence, 
guard sidestep for 190. Chances of you taking this star between 1 and 10. Mm. Um, 4 or 5? I was thinking 3. So 3 or 4, yeah. Okay. Let's just say 4. Like, okay. I don't... It's not, well, it, it's not horrible, horrible, but it is not something that is filling any need that this team has. If you told me she was like 160 or 150, I'd be like, okay. I'd rather take Willow Rosebark if I can. Yeah. And she's like 150 or something. Yeah, I just, I mean, obviously we don't have Willow now, but we have we Carla. Don't. Are you sure we don't have Willow? I just said that. I told you what stars they could take. She's not there. Oh, that's right. She doesn't. They Willow's in the game. She can't. They can't take him. Okay. Yeah, like you could take Literally. Carla. That gives you another four strength. But with this team, do you need another four strength? Yeah, I guess that's true. Okay, well. So I don't think it, she's the greatest figure. The but model I, looks cool. I'm looking at the model here. I think the model actually looks really cool, actually. I think this will be a fun one to see painted up as well with all the frogs and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is like a really cool looking model. And it's kind of sad that it's, I don't know. Who knows? Somebody will figure out. We'll know real soon if people think that this is uh, worth you taking or not. Yeah. Look at that. She has both her feet on the ground. <laughs> uh, let's see. Next up, we have some career highlights from her. We've got dirt from the dugout, which has Mindy Pie Whistle with her bare feet up on the desk. So, hmm. I guess this so is with feet guess, fetish. this is guess drawn by Quentin Tarantino. Nice. A lot of snakes on the book, and lizards and stuff. It's kind of neat. Just yeah. in the background. Next up, we have Star Player Spotlight Glottal Stop. I don't oh. remember the skills for Glottal Stop in the old rules. I could go get them, but I'm not going to. I don't to. remember him being a badass uh, Saurus, though. Or a Croxagore. Because now he's 6'6", six, 5+, six, um, dash on PA, 10+. Skills are loner, 4+, because I like to put that first. Animal Savagery, Frenzy, Mighty Blow plus 1, Prehensile Tail, Stand Firm, Thick Skull. And his special rules are Primal Savagery. Once per game, when Glottal fails an Animal Savagery roll, it may lash out at an opposing player rather than a teammate. Hmm. Which is pretty That's nice if there's someone standing next to you. Right. Well, and you weren't planning on hitting them. Well, why couldn't you do that to the one that you wanted to hit? No, but then you just wasted your your hit if you knock so, him down i mean it's still good so i'm not saying it's bad i got you um he's a lot too though is he 270 is he 2k is he 1k less better or like is that oh i'll have 270 to spend would you wouldn't you just want to spend 280 on griff or uh deep root me well, again you can't, I mean, can't take deep root on this team well, that's true. Um, I guess I guess for this team, sure. For me, I love this guy. For three reasons. Six strength, frenzy, Fren stand firm. I figured you would love him. This is the only figure I know of that comes with frenzy and stand firm. Is there another? Um, I, If there is, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, that's just amazing. I think it's cool to have a um, an actual Croc Croxagore yeah. star player, for sure. And now he's super expensive. He is 270 How much is a regular Crocs? 150 Yeah, uh, 140 140 So double the price for more strength, better skills. Uh, I mean, uh, better starting skills, I guess. I mean, I mean, stand firm. Just really, you're you're getting the extra strength. You're getting the stand firm and frenzy. Yeah, that's that's better. Oh yeah, one one assist gives you three dice twice. So. Mm hmm. So I like him. 
a lot. Well, and it's a cool looking model. Yeah, I think the model school. I think the artwork school. I wish they would have sent us the model. Yeah, that would have been nice. That's um, just being. That's just being greedy. <laughs> I think my only complaint is his mouth is shut. So, not quite as savage as it could be. Oh, uh, they're just doing that for flavor. Oh yeah. Then we got some career highlights. Then he goes into an interesting thing about Amazonian temple leagues. And this is essentially just a way to hold a different kind of league. Um, you've got um, a whole bunch of different tables. So there's tables for the crowd, kind of, one through six. It kind of changes what the local environment is. You've got artifacts, which are a special inducement. You've got, tells you what the prizes are. You've got a sweltering jungle weather table which has some nice changes to the weather table. Kind of like what we did, just combining some stuff. Has a Temple City kickoff table. So it's, it's, it's nice that they put that in there just to give you an alternative way to play, like just test stuff out. I don't know that we do it. I don't know how many... I don't want to say anything bad about it because obviously it's a great thing to have. It's great for inspiration for tournaments and stuff. Sure. It's just, I don't know how many people are putting together alternate types of, well, I guess they might like you do regular season and then you do an illustrian league, do a regular season and then, you know, chaos league there, or something. Yeah. There could be other people out there that says, Hey, we're going to, you know, our league is set in different areas of the world or something. You know, whatever. I'm hoping. You could do seasons, like you said. Yeah. You know, and change out the weather tables and stuff. Yeah, but they're really nice. So, uh, I recommend you run out and get the book and read it. I don't That's read all you're it. talking about? I mean, I don't want to read it all myself. No, when there are more pages? Well, yeah, I'm not done. I'm just saying. Oh, oh okay. okay. Uh, next up, we have the the rules for the pitch. So that's nice. So you can always have those on you if you have this book. Okay. We got Coffin Corner talking about all the dead peeps. We got a chat with the rat. A little. I, I love the fluff. But again, I think they should have take. I guess they can't take out the stuff that's all always there. But it, it still bugs me if they don't have the listing of the star stats for the other stars. You you would love that instead of like always the same. I mean, I like the fluffy things too. Yeah, I really wish, from a standpoint of like, let's say somebody just was into Blood Bowl, they buy the magazine, they buy this team as their first team. Seeing those stats, then they have everything in their back pocket, at least for their team. Mm -hmm. And then you know they're gonna go buy other stuff. And most that, people. That's the main thing. Is I just. It, if you're going to keep putting these out for every team, which I enjoy, I want them to do, I want to be able to just take this with me to an event and have all the info I need. Not, oh, now I need a star player card for this other star I'm taking, or, you know, whatever. Uh, next up, we've got uh, the balls. So it actually has the rules for the crystal skull ball and the snake swallowed ball. Oh, that's cool. And some nice art of... Uh, Amazon player being freaked out by a snake that swallowed a ball. It's weird, but it's good. We've got Secrets of the Amazons, and this is the strategy guide. So it tells about the positions, it tells about the team development, start different starting rosters that you can take. Sometimes they have people's names, kind of like a pun name, saying we're talking to this person or that person. Does it say who that might be? It's Steffi Kraus. I don't think it's a pun. I think it's just the person. Oh, okay. To my knowledge. But I don't know. Okay. Um, and then it's interesting, too, because it goes into team development and, like, which position, what are the primary skills and secondary skills you should take. And if you take should take a stat increase. I mean, this, there's your first skill should always be block. They better have said that. Block, 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 block. Yep. Okay. They better said if you take anything else besides block, you're a moron. Uh, Russell, 
they do mention wrestle. Like, after gaining block or wrestle, it's really up to you how do you want to use the player in, in question, blah, 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 blah. So, okay. yeah, it's definitely block is recommended for first. Then we've got setups. So they show the pitch and how to set it up. Or how to set up your positionals, I guess. Okay. That pitch is nice looking, but man, it looks super busy. It's a lot of like trees and stuff, isn't it? So like, many roots. Like, yeah. Roots and vines and stuff. Next, we've got the final star player spotlight for the issue, Boa Constrictor. And you have him, right? <laughs> oh, I have him here. He's uh, he's snaky. Snake. Uh, so he is six movement, three strength, three plus edge, four plus passing, nine plus armor. He has dodge, hypnotic gaze, loner plus four. Prehensile tail, save pair of hands, sidestep. Um, his special power is look into my eyes once per game. If Boa starts his activation, marking an opposition player with the ball, up, uh, uh, he may roll a, a d6. On a one, nothing happens. On a two plus, the opposition player loses possession of the ball. Boa immediately gains possession of the ball. And Boa's activation ends immediately. So, when he starts his activation marking a player, does this mean I can move up to the guy with the ball? No, of course not. Starts his activation. So, that's well, the thing. Is like... So, I, if, I would have to be next to your guy. Your turn would end. Then I go, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, using my power. Second to that is having that person pushed into you. Because it's not the beginning of the turn, it's the beginning of his activation. So if someone hits them and pushes them into you, which means you would have to be one or two, maybe three squares away, and we're really reaching at that point. Like, I'm tempted just to have a mini contest here. First one of you to actually do this, and honor system, please obey the honor system, as you're playing this team, and this could go on for years... The first person to actually use this ability, email us at bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com, and I'll send you a set of dice or something. Like, legitimately. Yeah, give us step by steps how this happened. Like, if you ran an Amazon league with eight people, all taking Amazon teams, each one of them with this player rostered, how many games is it going to be before this actually happens? Well, here's the deal. You could set up, get him into position next to the ball carrier. And then, you know, obviously <sighs> probably somebody would be like, in case I, I blow a dice roll, I have to block this guy off. I rescind my offer and I present to you an alternative. Okay. Him and Estelle together on the same team. If she's within five of the ball carrier... You could make it to where the ball carrier can't do anything, and then he can get up on them. And that next turn, ball carrier doesn't do anything, and if they don't knock him away, then yeah. he could do it's it. It's still super. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, have, you have people like Griff or these other guys who can do amazing things, and this mm -hmm. one's like, okay. And then you go, okay, well, how much is he? He's he's a little bit better armor than a. A Amazonian woman, woman. Yeah, I mean, he does have hypno gaze, so that's nice. And prehensile tail, safe pair of hands, which will never come into play, and sidestep. Yeah. So again, sidestep gets you into position. You can knock people into him, and he can yeah. move around like a snake. Okay. Um, is he worth two hundred k though? No. Is he worth one fifty? Um, I don't know. I mean, if you had 200k to spend on a star player, there's got to be somebody better in that pile of people over there. Oh, yeah, it's not going to be this guy. Which is sad I mean, because this I is. Mean, really, I'd rather have Estelle because she has guard and dodge. Yeah. Or guard, um, sidestep, dodge. Well, he has sidestep too. So. Yeah, but the, the guard is better than anything he has. Oh, for sure. 
And it's a sad thing, too, because this is a great-looking figure. This might be one of the best star players they've done. You know, we talked about this before off. This would have been a great, great big guy. Yeah. That feels like a missed opportunity. Like, if this was a boa constrictor positional that had hypnogaze and, you know, the sidestep and prehensile tail and he was 150 and he had one more strength or something. I'd be all for it. I hate, I hate these stupid special rules. And I know they've been around for a while now with the relaunch. And I know there are some really good ones and ones that I will probably take advantage of. But overall, I hate them. So, yeah, I'd like to talk about some of those on a later podcast for sure. So. That might be a good subject for a later podcast. Let me go ahead I and get why, I get why they're doing it. They want you to lust after some player that costs you $40 as a business model so you can go spend your money and get it and they make money. And that's their job. That's exactly their job. We get that. Um, but I don't know. I, I love how this model looks. I don't really mind the pun name. And at the same time, he could have been had such a better name. It's a it's a horrible name. Same with Glottal Stop. Two of the worst names. And again, so. Glottal Stop's probably not bad if you don't know what a Glottal Stop is. But what I, is I'm, a Glottal Stop, Steve? God. So I'm going to get the technical definition because if I don't get it right, someone's going to complain. It is a type of consonant. God, I don't even know how to say that. Consonantal sound used in many spoken languages produced by obstructing airflow in the vocal tract, or more precisely, the glots. So mm. it's, it's, a, it's a language thing. Oh, okay. Okay. I should have well, a better example for you, but I don't have one. That's okay. Um, you know, based off that, yeah, those are two terrible names. I agree with you. Yeah, I just, I didn't think I was going to get called on it, but yeah. Um, if you like, again, if you'd never heard of it, it's fine. But I have, like Estelle Van New. People are theorizing that it's a, it's based on an old voodoo person. Um, I guess there's this the street in front of GW is Estelle or something. Hmm. Uh, or, I don't know. I didn't get into it. I don't know it and wasn't that keen on it because it was kind of people just going back and forth. But I'm sure there's a pun there too. And I just don't know it. So I don't have any questions with it. But Boa Constrictor is freaking lazy. Especially when they did those first releases and was talking about how the throwers had boa constrictors, the same exact spelling on their arms before the boa constrictor character came out. Right. So annoying. So um, overall, is that everything? Nope, nope, nope. Um, okay. Next up, and I do love this. Excuse me. I had a burp. Um, Next part was Dungeon Bowl Update, Amazon Teams. So, they are getting moved into the College of Heavens. And it's really nice. Interestingly, you can have up to six blitzers, or six blockers and four blitzers. So. That seems asinine, but it, whatever. It kind of does. They do, it's interesting too, because also with the College of Heavens, um, they changed up the color of the kit for the player. Her armor and headdress are all shining white with gold, and her tunic and lower tunic, up, whatever, her other dress is uh, blue. So it's a whole different look to it. Hmm. And then it ends up with a comic. Okay. Same uh, artist and writer? Yeah. Time and short, uh, 
Christian Schwager. Yep. Cool. And it has the painted figures of the stars and the players and such. So overall, how, what do you what would you rate this one to ten? The whole release? Yeah. Um, I'd say an eight. Because I think they did a lot for the team. I think the team is a lot more dynamic. I think it's a lot more fun now. It is very similar to Norse in a way, but it's also different because they're Amazons. It makes me want to play them, and I just got off a season of playing them. Uh, the The figures look good. The star players look good. I'm always going to have issues with certain things. But overall, I think it's a positive release. Okay. You? Uh, without reading the spike, I would say just based off the info. And usually when I read the spikes, then I'm like, oh, I'd like to play Amazon. Too. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, based on the figures being on one foot, <laughs> the, you know, just this and that and me not reading. So do we need, the, to, do we just magazine. need to open up a gaming company called Two Footed Figures? And just make nothing but star, uh, Blood Bowl players that have their f- f- both feet on the ground. Here, look, if we had the, sl- I mean, we have the slot of bases, or we used to, and some of them used to be like on that little slot of piece, the, yeah, the foot, one foot, you know, and they'd put like little sprigs of grass or something to just give it something more solid. These aren't doing that anymore, and it just drives me insane. Um, for me personally, without reading the Spike magazine, I'm sure this number would go up if I had the Spike magazine. Um, I'm going to say uh, I'll err on the side of a roundup. We'll say six. Okay, fair enough. So an average um, of seven, I guess. That's fair. Uh, if the models were all on one feet or two feet or just <laughs> were a- attached better and really... Some of these star player names are really goofy and stuff like that. I still hate the card packs. I just absolutely hate them. Um, I look, we're can't. very we're very blessed that GW gives us this stuff to review, and I'm very thankful. So thank you, GW. From a standpoint of yes, I oh I bought the dice, I bought the pitch. If you wouldn't have gave me any of this stuff, I might have bought one of the star players just because I think they're cool. Um, I mean, obviously, if I would have bought everything out of pocket, it, whether I needed or not, it would give a higher ranking. Um, I'm sure I'll love the spike, and I'm sure that after I read the spike, I'll say, "Oh yeah, you're right, Steve. It's a, it's a seven. But it's just I don't like seeing people <laughs> models break for no reason, and I just see that too much in a game where these models don't hit all the time. So. Th- that's one thing we could get off on a tangent a little bit, and I don't want to, but I've not seen that happen much. I've not oh, seen I... many figures that actually break, even the old Skaven with the tails. I know it well, happens, and I've seen I've seen some examples, but not nearly that much. Almost every tournament, somebody's going, did you bring your super glue? Did you bring your super glue? Yeah, but and that happened back in the old dates, too. Well, fair Dude, enough. There was like two at Chaos I don't know Camp. if it really did as much as we think. I mean, okay, maybe. I can't. I can't disagree. So I don't think you're wrong. Um, I just don't see it being that big, big of an issue to me because I've never. Oh, I'm just gonna jinx myself if I finish that sentence. Right. I um, mean, it, it yeah. doesn't happen to me because I try to get models that are on two feet or like the. Um, the position that has the the blitzer position that has the looks like they're in mid run, yeah, and they're barely. I would probably lean that figure over and try to get two points of contact on that base if I could. So, and I've done that with some of the little goblins and snotlings too that I built. You know, they're just barely on like one little foot foot or tippy toe or one hand, and I position them in a way where they can get two points of contact, so they'll never break off. So, okay, you do you. I, it's just a nitpick thing. Some people don't care. I do. Um, but yeah, I'm glad. Here's the deal. I am glad to see these Amazons come out. And more than ever, I'm saying get rid of the teams of legend. 
until they come out, we will wait patiently for vampires, Kimri, Chaos Dwarves, and High Elves. And if they don't come out, then maybe they're not meant to be in the latest edition of Blood Bowl. And I say this as owning every one of those teams. Oh, so yeah. I really don't, I don't want my teams to go away. But we see what happens every time GW redoes a team. They are different. And this is significantly different than the last Amazons. No, no auto blockers. But to be and fair, if we look at the last release, Norse wasn't that different from the previous Norse. I disagree. They got rid of the runner and the thrower, and they combined it into a Valkyrie. Yeah. They gave you big boar pigs that can... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Never mind. If they work, could sway a game. I'm not fair saying enough. You're pigs. right. And Norse are not, at least NAF-wise, they were like a top 10 team, and now they're not a top 10 team. So I retract. That's changed pretty quick. So. Anyways, okay. so wrapping this up. Legends, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're good. Um, you know, I like some of the artwork and stuff that I've seen. So that stuff's always good. And that's and if you're saying it feels really fluffy, that's really positive. Yeah, I like it. Fluff side about it. So okay, we were. I was talking to a guy at the shop not too long ago, and he thought that was what's the coolest thing about Blood Bowl is that. We have like fluff and storylines, you know, behind the scenes, and yeah, he thought that was really cool. So, anyways, let's wrap this up. Uh, okay, and we'll come back with some shadows. Final segment of what might be haven't looked, not going to look. If you want to do it, you can do it and let us know because honestly, whatever, uh, could be our shortest episode ever. Shout out. There we go. And yeah. what could also be our shortest shout outs ever. I don't really have anything because we just did an episode. We just got back from Chaos Cup and we're waiting for Chaos Cup to do Chaos Cup ones. So shout out to GW for sending us stuff, letting us review things early. It's always awesome. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah, it was really awesome, actually. They sent some of that stuff early, even though they didn't have the spike. And, um, yeah, good, good on them. So we appreciate it. Yeah, and then we will. Um, so shout out to. It's only like four weeks away now. Yeah. <laughs> the Kansas City Open is happening that, at the end of the month. Yeah, or I was just going to say that we Warrior will Open. hopefully be what? at the next tournament of K- U.S. Open. What's that? I said I was hope I was going to say I was going I was going to say I was going to say son. No, I was trying to say that hopefully we'll be at the next tournament that we know of is U.S. Open. Uh, yeah, I, me and Jennifer are still planning on going. I think uh, Gary, who came with me to Chaos Cup, he's going. I think oh, he Strickland's is. Going. Yeah, Gary all of a sudden decided uh, <laughs> his wife gave him permission, so he's going. <laughs> okay. So he's happy about that. And... Um, also, give a shout out in case you don't know. Coming up soon is Nuffleween. Yep, Nuffleween nine. Uh, some people had some questions about the inducements, and after looking at that, we realized like that was like an old entry. So I think Steve is going to fix up that entry mm-hmm. on, on the inducements and get that settled straight over the next couple of days after you listen to this. And so you can check back on the website there. But come on out and see us in Norman, Oklahoma for Nuffleween number nine. It's, Possibly the last one. It's only a month and a week away. Yeah. As, uh, I don't like this. Yeah, Not that's, enough time. That's what happens, bro. I know. So. Hey. But no, I don't have any other shout outs. We hope you enjoy this show. Um if you heard Steve talk about it on the last podcast or even at chaos cup, he's starting a job. And so we will do our best to get the Chaos cup episode out in the month of October. So you'll have two episodes this month. And, um, but we're also going to tell our whole long drawn out, boring food (laughs) field adventure. You know, we're going to tell it all to you when the time is right and when we can record it all. So me and Steve's just going to have to get together on some weird time because he's working nights and I'm working days. So Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah, for sure. 
Okay. So. Well, with that, we will see you next time. All right. Peace out, everybody. You can follow Both Down on Twitter at Both Down. You can follow Scott at Real Scott Prime. And Steve at Kilowog2814. If you'd like to email them, the email address is bothdownpodcasts at gmail.com. Or for more information, you can visit them at bothdown.com or at facebook.com forward slash bothdown. Calling our warriors. 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 Yes, yeah, come. We taking the crown. We are the warriors. We don't back down. It's the battle of the century. When you step in, we own. This is we land. CPL is we own. Holy ball, let me them for six, hit them for six, hit them for six. Any team from, they're gonna get licks, gonna get licks, gonna get licks. Holy ball, let me them for six, hit them for six, hit them for six. Any team from, they're gonna get licks, gonna get licks, gonna get licks. We are the Amazon warriors. We are the Amazon warriors. We are the Amazon warriors.